If it happened already, I'm going to be talking about it later, but uh, an SVG file, or Scalable Vector Graphics file, is what all of these are. It basically, if you were using an editing tool like Illustrator or Inkscape or another one I'm going to show you, as you use your pen tool or your mouse to draw a shape, it would draw the lines exactly as your pen or your mouse has drawn them, and if you add color, it'll add it accordingly as well. So that's how you get this sort of hand-drawn quality. Now you may not have those images available or find the one you want, so you can actually bring in things like JPEGs and PNGs into um, <clears throat> VideoScribe as well. So I'll show you an example of that. Let's say I want to take an, this elephant out and I want to put in instead a picture of an elephant. I'm going to go here to the properties and then search for a new image here or replace it. Now I'm very caref careful here. I'm going to find something that I've got in uh, from Wikipedia Commons, so it's uh, free. It's a Rembrandt image. And when I bring it in, because it doesn't have any ability to draw itself with an SVG format, it tries to interpret or convert it into a line drawing. So you have got these different choices here. So some of them are just bizarre. I mean, if you're looking for something, sorry, video scribe. If you're looking for something artistic, you might want one of these. But the one that's probably most realistic is this one here. And it looks like a postage stamp. But what it is, is there's a, an opaque image on top that as it sort of draws, it's actually um, sort of almost like it's scratching through a, like a scratch and sniff card and underneath the image will be revealed. It's hard to describe but I'll show you in a later tutorial. I think it'll make more sense. So that's typically the one I would choose in this case. And then you can have a little preview here. You can see what I mean. So it kind of reveals it. But it's pretty quick and it's pretty obvious that it's not actually being drawn. But I'm going to bring that in for now and leave it like that. Now I have to resize this obviously. And then if I just preview it, you know, if you reduce the drawing time maybe to one second, you might get away with it. But it still looks like, a, you know, a cartoon um, software is creating this image. So the other thing you can do is you can actually move the object in. So I'm just going to make some space on the canvas here and take this same image, the elephant. I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going to put it after this text here and paste it so it'll appear after the text has. Oops, I didn't mean just to rotate it, but that's something else you can do, you'll notice, I, rather than going to the properties. Now if you've messed it up like I have here, don't forget you can go back to the properties and you can just change the current rotation back to zero. Like that. Now going back into the properties again, I mentioned that you can actually move it in, so a, a hand can be appearing to slide it in and slide it out. Now if I just simply choose the direction right now, maybe I want it to come in from the top, it comes in with the pen. So that's probably not what you want, so you need to modify in that, partic that particular instance the hand to not be a, a holding a, a, a tool, but basically just being a hand sort of sliding something in. So I can click on the button at the bottom and pick the hand, and it would, should ideally come correspond to the, uh, the the grouping I had before. So you'll see here uh, that this particular this particular grouping does not have a hand that doesn't have a pen. So I might go maybe to this one here. Now I'm aware that I'm using a different hand, and the eagle eye people might say, well, that's a, that's a male's hand versus a female's hand, or that person has different nails. But for the sake of the exercise, I don't think it's a big deal. So now when I preview it it will slide in. And then I can do that, and then you can have a look to see what it looks like once I've set my canvas position. And then you can play around with the timing. If you want it to appear a little faster, but you want to have more time for the hand before it disappears, you could say maybe pause a couple of seconds. So it comes up quickly, and then the hand disappears quickly. So the ha actually, the faster that it animates, the faster the hand disappears. It's the pause and the transition I think you can play around with, and I could be wrong here. So quick, and out, and then a pause. So I would say maybe leave the hand at one second, just for a bit more natural transition. So that's the second thing. Now there's one more thing you can do, and it depends on what you're drawing. So let's say I go back to this dog here. I'm going to copy this dog and reuse it. And I'm just going to bring him down here zoom in a little bit and I want to set the camera and what I want to do is I want to do something called a morph where I get it to change ever so slightly so if you morph between two completely different images so let's say I want this dog to morph in from the giraffe image I'm just going to zoom out so you can see so I'm going to go first of all up here to the properties and go to the third option to morph 
and I'm going to say what I want it to morph from. So I'm going to morph it from the giraffe and OK. So let's see if this works. So you notice the giraffe, which was higher up, uh, moved down and turned into the, the dog. I can change the speed of the transition, but it looks kind of weird. And that's because they're two basically different shapes. So morphing doesn't really work when you have a triangle and morphing into a circle or a square because it has to sort of reconfigure itself if you think about the Terminator movies. So what it would work though well for though is if you want to take this image, and I'm just going to choose to draw him again, like a regular image, and I want another copy of it. I want to leave him exactly on top, but I want to maybe rotate him a little bit, maybe 10%. and I want to morph him from the other dog. So now we'll see what they look like. So I can speed up the time. I can say maybe I want this to be a half second. I don't want to have any pause between the two. And then I can do the same thing again. I take the same dog. I copy it from its previous position. I might make it now 20 degrees. And then do another one. Make this one 30 degrees. And so on and so forth. So now if you play it. So you can kind of get them to move a little bit. Um, you could also have them move over a little bit as well as he moves. So as soon as you start to do that, you'll notice that it, it kind of gets out of sync with drawing. So there's limits to what you can use this for, but if you wanted to, you could also fade in and out. Uh, you could morph from a solid object to maybe one that has uh, very little uh, transparency, or has a lot of transparency. I'm actually, actually not use this very often, but something to look at and see what this looks like. So not perfect. Uh, you'll notice also that it has an option to clear the previous item. You do want to clear the previous item so that it do, if it's drawing on top, it will eliminate the one below it. So when I'm running the preview, it should actually only show one image at a time. There we go. But as soon as I choose a transparency, I have to go back to make sure I also choose the morph option, which I didn't do. Let's see if that works. Yeah, not great. So I want to show you at the end of this uh, a little example of what I did um, using the morph with some stick men to simulate movement, uh, simulate him or it walking, climbing, and so on and so forth. But be aware you've got quite a few options with your um, with your properties to morph or move in. And remember that first one we did with the elephant here, we moved it in so I could I could choose the direction and the hand that I wanted. Okay, so at the end of this, I'm just going to show you a quick little snippet of the video I did where I used the morphing feature to create uh, movement. So for this bit, I used a uh, stick figure and morphing. So the stick figure is essentially the same shape, uh, and I did a really quick morph between the, the different objects to create the illusion of movement. So this poor little guy has to jump over a pit of sharks or um, shark-infested waters, and now he's going to encounter, we don't know what, but something scary. So he has to go back and get a pole to jump over it and do some somersaults and then moves on to the next obstacle, which in this case, I believe, if I remember correctly, is yes, a mountain. So then it's a series of little, of little morphed images of him moving, two or three different things to show him walking up the mountain. And then he jumps off and then his parachute will deploy and his face changed. So it's really simple, just using the same stick figure a couple times and morphing.